Shalom. Hey, I just want to make a quick video. So, I was on social media yesterday, and, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know, I've been thinking about this for the last month. The Hebraic Roots Movement, once again, it's the spring feast time, making this video at the end of April, and some people... You know, there's this big debate, this big controversy about Passover. A lot of people kept Passover last month. A lot of people keeping it this month. Um, you know, the uh, rabbinic calendar. Uh, a lot of people kept it last Friday. And one post in particular somebody made was like, look, you know, this... This whole thing with the calendar. We all need to get together. We need to have a debate. We need to take a vote. And come up with a calendar. Is that scriptural? Is it scriptural to, um, to follow the, you know, the Jewish Hillel 2 calendar? We know that's not scriptural. This issue is settled. It's settled by Scripture. I mean, you don't even have to go outside of the uh, the Bible itself to know the source of the calendar. Go to Numbers chapter 10 and pay attention to verse 8 and verse 10. Verse 8 says that the uh, sons of Aaron are to blow the trumpets. And then the next, you know, the following several verses tells you when they are to blow the trumpets. Verse 10, they say you are to blow the trumpets to announce the new months, to announce the appointed times, the Moedim. So who's announcing the calendar? The sons of Aaron, the priest. <clears throat> it does not say the Sanhedrin. It does not say the rabbis. It does not say Hillel too says the sons of Aaron. And then we have the incident in the temple where um, during the time of David they had two high priests and then Solomon dismissed Abathar because he was, you know, he sided with Adonia. And we're left with one high priest, Zadok. And about 500 years later, we have Ezekiel giving his prophecies. In Ezekiel, 20, uh, Ezekiel 44, he, said, he, he gives a list of different uh, duties that are only for the sons of Zadok. They have been removed from the rest of the Levites. It's only the sons of Zadok. And it's a number of different duties. One of those duties in verse 24 is to announce the calendar. You know, to set apart the Sabbath, to announce the Moedim. The calendar duty is given to the sons of Zadok. So, the calendar issue is settled. Yahuwah himself settled it. We go by what the sons of Zadok say. So where do we find the testimony of the sons of Zadok? <clears throat> We find the testimony from the sons of Zadok in the Dead Sea Scrolls. There is a calendar in the Dead Sea Scrolls. In fact, it's a subject of a lot of the Dead Sea Scrolls. They, they spend a lot of time talking about the calendar. <clears throat> it's very similar to the calendar of Enoch. It's a solar-based calendar. The only difference between it and the calendar of Enoch is uh, the days of the week. In Enoch, the days or the year starts on a Sunday, the first day of the, of the week. In the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, Zadok calendar, they begin on a Wednesday. Well, why is that? <clears throat> if you study the writings of Velikovsky, he'll, he explains why. Not intending to, but if you, if you take Velikovsky's information and you apply it to the calendar, it completely explains why the Enochian Zadok calendar is 364 days long. That's because the year used to be 364 days long. 
It was changed several times. Velikovsky documents that in his book, uh, Worlds in Collision. Prior to the incident where Sennacherib's army was destroyed, the year was 360 days long. Prior to that, before the Exodus, the year was shorter. We don't know how much shorter. Um, I think the theory is that it was 354 days long. Either way, it was shorter than 360. Um, during the time of Noah's flood, we can see in Scripture it was 360 days long. Or, um, and so then, you know, during the time of Enoch, it was 364 days long. So, starting with Enoch, the year was 364 days long. Some sort of cosmic, cataclysmic event occurred that caused the flood. Uh, switched the calendar to 360 days. You can see that in the story of Noah. From there, uh, at some point, something happened. Probably the Tower of Babel. That shortened the year to less than 360 days. Potentially 354, but we don't know for sure. That that number is accurate. <clears throat> After the um, Exodus or during the Exodus, it was changed to 360, and um, then after Sennacherib's army was destroyed, it went to 365. Velikovsky documents how civilizations all over the world. Around the uh, 6th century B.C., they went from a 360-day calendar to a 365-day calendar. Numerous civilizations. So that's why there's a difference in the days of the week and such and so forth, because, um, because of the changes to the length of the year. If you're watching this video, you're on my YouTube channel, just go and, and click on my, my name, David Hanotsuri underneath this video. Uh, once you click on that, click on videos and you can see all my videos. I've made several of them on the calendar that shows you the evidence. The calendar issue settled. Sort of. I mean, uh, there, there's different ways that people interpret the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls calendar. Um, that's the debate we need to have. Not about the new moon. Not about the, uh, you know, the barley or any of that. The year begins at the spring equinox, period. Now, we can debate about the days of the week and whether Saturday is a Sabbath or does the Sabbath change every year. That's a debate we could have. Um, personally, I don't think the Sabbath changes every year. I think it's, it's always on a Saturday. And you can look on my channel, see my videos, and you can see the reason I believe that. But the calendar issue settled, um, if you want to be scriptural. Now, if you don't want to be scriptural, then by all means, follow the rabbis or follow, you know, follow uh, you know, the people in, the, in Israel that are citing the new moon, if you don't care about being scriptural. But do yourself a favor. <clears throat> Go to Google and type in the ancient Babylonian calendar. Just type it in, just like that, or you know, Babylonian calendar or whatever, and and read what the Babylonian calendar was, and ask yourself: Is the calendar I'm following today exactly like the Babylonian calendar? And ask yourself: Well, well why is the Babylonian calendar the same as the calendar I'm taking? I'm I'm using. And then go and look up um, Hillel. Hillel the first, Hillel the older. And look, you know, he, he's widely regarded as the founder of modern Judaism. And, and see if you can find out where he was born. And see if you can connect the dots and, and realize where the origin of the calendar that you're, that you're using right now is from. Um, so anyway... Now you, now you got some homework. Go study the calendar. Study the Zadok calendar. And while you're at it, type in the name Rachel Elior Chicago Divinity School and listen to her lecture. Thank you and shalom.